how to make the giraffe doyle stop. Learn how to make 3D shapes with Amber Makes Sewing School and decorate your home with this gorgeous door stop. Cutting out. Take the fabric panel and you can see all of the pieces are labelled with the names of them above them and also there are lots of little lettered labels in square boxes with arrows pointing to where you need to place them. These are to help you to match up all the pieces and makes assembly so much easier because you can see what piece joins to which piece in which position. So to start off, you're going to need to label all of these pieces. So it's best to cut each piece out roughly like I'm doing around the outer edge. Make sure you cut out just roughly around the edge, keeping the labels in place at this stage, then it's a lot easier to label them. You can see I'm cutting around the label of the right body piece here, so it's still part of the piece before I cut it all and cut along the actual lines. So keep all those labels with the arrows in place and do that with all of the fabric pieces so that you've got the roughly cut out. Repeat that with all of the others. Now the instructions will tell you how to label each piece. So for this piece, if you see, there's the A box with an arrow. So cut out that little A box. You can just trim round it and then pin it into, the pl into place where the arrow was onto your piece. You need to keep all these labels on during construction and then you can remove them at the end, but it makes construction so much easier. So you can see here, just cut out the little square. This one is the G box. And then pin it in position where the arrow showed you. So I'm put, pinning the A and the G to the bottom of the front body piece here. For the B square, you need to measure a quarter of an inch down from the top and mark that with a small dot. You can do that with an erasable pen and then cut out the little square B labelled box and pin that next to it just so that you, to remind you that that's the B arrow. You can also mark these dots or labels on the wrong side of your fabric pieces in pencil. It's sometimes easier to do that and then you don't need all of the labels and also if you're sewing something right sides together you can easily see where it is. Don't forget to cut out the label for each piece and pin it on. So you can see I'm pinning front body, pin it near to the top edge of the right side and then you'll remember which piece is which when you're coming to assembly. Now you've cut all the labels out, you can cut around the outer edge of each piece. All the seam allowances are included in all of the pieces so you don't need to add any extra. But I would suggest that you also write these labels in pencil on the wrong side, just in case they fall off. And as I said, when you're sewing them right sides together, then you can easily see where they are. By taking the time to label all your pieces now, when you come to sew your giraffe together, it will be much easier and no confusion. So that's the front body piece labelled. Now you can see here I've labelled the back body, I've measured quarter of an inch down from the top from, for the F and D points. You need to cut along the line, that's the slit for the dart. But here's the right body piece. You can see there's the B point that I've measured quarter of an inch in and marked with the dot and the F point. The little section on the left that's larger is for the seam allowance. I've made this larger because it's easier to sew together. On the top of the head, you can see there's a drawn line. This is for creating the dart to put the ears and the horns in. So just cut carefully along the drawn line and then that's your dart ready for when you sew it together. And here's the left body piece. I've already cut along the dart. I've labelled the D point. Remember again, quarter of an inch in from the edge. All of this information is in the instructions. So you can follow these as you're cutting them out. Here's the front sole and the back sole and then the four horn pieces. There are right one, there are right left and there are fronts and backs. There's the tail and the tummy and then the four ear pieces. There are two inner ears and two outer ears for the right and the left ears. And these are the optional applique pieces if you want to personalise your giraffe. Making the ears. 
place the right outer ear and the right inner ear right sides facing. I'm going to remove the labels at this stage. You can label them on the back if you want to remember which side is the outer and which side is the inner by just drawing lightly in pencil with an erasable pen. Now matching raw edges, pin the two ear pieces together all the way round, just around the curved edges. Now sew the two pieces together all around this curved edge, but leave that top, that bottom edge unstitched. So it looks like this. Now trim the seam allowances. This just removes the bulk and will help you to get the seam laying right on the edge and you'll get a neater finish. You can make small little clips into the curves if you like, but I've just trimmed my seam allowance. Now turn the ear right sides out through the gap that you left in the bottom unstitched and push your fingers inside so that the seams are laying right on the edge. And give it a press to make sure it's nice and flat. Then tack the bottom raw edges of the two pieces together just like this to hold it. So this is the outer ear side. So to give the ear a little shape, fold, fold it in half to find the centre and mark that with a pin. And then fold the outer corners of the bottom tack wall edges inwards so they meet in the centre of the right inner ear. And then fold the other side so it meets in the centre. This gives the ears a little bit of shape. So they don't overlap, they just meet in the centre. Pin those together and then tack all the way along to hold those folds in place. Once you've done that, this completes the right ear. Repeat this to make the left ear in exactly the same way using the left outer ear and the left inner ear pieces. Making the horns. Take the right horn front and the right horn back and place them right sides facing. Take the labels off to do this, and if you want to remember which one is which, then just write on the back of one of them in pencil or an erasable pen. Matching all the raw edges, pin them together all the way round. Now sew the two pieces together all the way around, but leaving the bottom straight edge unstitched. Once you've done that, it will look like this. So take a pair of scissors and we need to do some trimming. Trim off the bottom corners and then cut a little notch just at the end of the straight bit where the curved top bit ends. It will just help the seams to lay neater by removing the bulk. And then trim off the seam allowance, again to remove bulk. You can also clip into these curves as well, as long as you don't clip into the stitching. When you get to the other side, clip out a small notch and then clip off that bottom corner. Now turn the whole horn right sides out. It's easy if you use a turning tube and a stick for this, and it will look like this. Make sure the seams are all lying right on the edge and give them a press. If you run the edge of your stick or a turning tool, that will help to get the seams laying on the edge. Now to give the horn a little bit of body, Put a little bit of wadding inside. You only want a small amount. It's just to make it lightly stuffed. You don't want it overstuffed, but by making it lightly stuffed, it gives it some body and also makes it stand up. So using the stick from your turning tool is ideal for this or any other turning tool to just poke a little bit of stuffing in. The stuffing needs to go right into the top of the horn. I like to use a bigger piece than I need. It helps to push it in and then you can remove what you don't need. So push it in so it's just stuffed that lightly, but you don't want any stuffing in the bottom quarter of an inch as this will be in the seam. So just push it in so that the bottom quarter of an inch is unstuffed. And then tack it together across the end to hold the stuffing in place. Repeat that, then that's the right horn finished or tacked. Then repeat that with the left horn pieces to make the left horn and now you have your pair of horns. Attaching the ears and horns. We'll start with the right side. Take the right body and the right ear and the right horn. You can see there's the slit you cut earlier. Now take the right ear and place it at the bottom of the cut line. The right outer ear needs to lay flat against the right body and then match up the raw edges of the slit 
with the edge of the ear. And then pin that into place. Now take the right horn and place the bottom raw tacked edge right sides facing with the right body so it sits right next to the right ear. The right horn back should lie flat against the right body facing left. You need to have half an inch above the top of the horn and the top of the right body. If it isn't then just cut the slit a bit longer and move them down. Tack the horn and the ear into place. Now fold the fabric over so that you're matching up the raw cut edges of the slit and pin it together. The ear and the horn will be sandwiched between the slit. Now this is where you're going to sew a dart so just straighten out that slit and, the, and a small section below it because you're going to sew below, beyond the end of the dart. So starting at the top of the head, stitch the pin slit together, stitching through the bottom of the ear and the horn. When you get to the bottom of the cut slit, angle your seam so it goes into a point gently below the slit. This will be about half an inch below it. Now the right ear and the right horn are now attached to the right body and the dart gives a little shape. Repeat this with the left body and the left ear and horn in exactly the same way but you do need to turn the ear and the horn over. The left inner ear should lie flat against the left body and the left horn front should lie flat against the left body. Again pin and stitch the dart so that you've sandwiched the ear and the horn between and now you've attached your ears and horns to the left body and the right body. Attaching the front body. Take the front body and the right body. Now you can see you've got A points at the bottom of each and you've got B points with dots at the bottom of each. So match up the A points. You can take the labels off and either pin them near so they're out of the way of the seam or draw them on the back with pencil. It's just that you need, it helps to remember where these points are. So I'm just moving them out of the way. Now match up those two A points and pin together. You can, you can see there that the prints will match up. And then go up to the B points. Now you need to make sure these dots match up. So again, I'm going to pin the label on a little bit further down just so I remember, know which is the B. And the same with the B point there. There's the dot that I marked earlier. Now if you push a pin through from the wrong side where the dot is through to the right side and then push that pin through the dot on the right body then you know that those dots are matched up. So push the pin all the way through and then those dots are matched up. If you pull the pin you can see they're nice and even and then take a pin and pin the two fabric pieces together, you can then remove that marking pin. Now pin the right body to the front body between the B dot and the A point at the bottom, matching the raw edges. The, they're curved in different ways, but they have been designed so that they will fit together. So just match up the raw edges. You will have to ease them a little bit just because the curves are different shapes, but the curves are actually the same length, so they will fit together. So just ease them between the A and the B point. You might need to move some of your pins, or if you pull the fabric a little bit, then you can ease it to fit. But you can see there, I'm going to move one of those pins and put a vertical one in, because the curve is a little bit sharper. When the curve is sharp, it's easier if you put vertical pins in, just to hold it into place. Now stitch the two pieces together, starting at the A point and working all the way to the B dot. Don't stitch beyond the B dot, just reverse or lock stitch there, but don't stitch beyond it. Once that's done, you can see those two pieces are joined together. And the prints match up as well. And you can see that I haven't stitched beyond the B dot, so you can see the top little flat bit is still unstitched. To give it a neat finish, 
press the seam open at this stage. It's much easier if you press your seams open or to one side as you go. It's quite hard to do it later. And particularly with this seam, you need it pressed open for when you sew the rest of the giraffe together. So press the seam open and you've now attached the front body to the right body. Making the tail. Take the tail piece, you can remove the label now, and fold it in half, right sides facing lengthways. Then pin it together. I'm making sure that the darker section at the bottom of the tail is matched up, so I'm pinning together at that point first, and then pin it together at the top, and then pin it together around the curved edge. You'll get a neater finish if you make sure you match up that darker bottom section. Now sew it together along the long side and all the way around to the curved bottom but leaving the top straight edge unstitched and it will look like this. Now because you want to remove the bulk so the tail is nice and flat, clip off that corner and then trim the seam allowance in half around the curve. I'm also going to clip the seam allowance a little bit. It just helps the seam to lay flatter when you turn it right sides out. It's only that bit you need to clip. Once that's done, turn the whole tail right sides out. Now the easiest way to do this is with a turning tube. Push the tube inside, take the stick and using the blunt end, push the end of the tail up through the tube. If you don't have a turning tube, you'll just have to turn it right sides out carefully. Now to make sure the seams are laying right on the edge, if you use the pointed end of the stick or in any other turning tool, Push very gently to make sure the seams are laying on the edge, making sure you don't split the fabric or the seams and run the point of your tool along the seam and it will help it to lay flat. And then roll it between your fingers so that the seam is laying right on the edge. And then give it a press to remove the creases from where you've turned it right sides out and also to keep that seam on the edge. Now to add a little character to your tail, tie a knot in the end. You don't have to do this, but I think it looks quite sweet. So just tie a knot right in the very end and just adjust it. So you've just got the curved end sticking out. And then I'm just going to pull open the long end of the end of the tail open a bit just to make it neat. And there's your tail finished. Attaching the tail. Take the back body piece and you can see the slit that you cut earlier. Open it up a little bit. Now place the tail on top. The seam of the tail should meet the bottom of the slit and the folded edge of the table should be at the top. And match up the raw edges and pin that into place. Then once it's done, tack it into place. So you can see the tail is attached to the bottom of the slit and it's facing left. Attaching the back body. Take the back body and place it right sides facing with the left body. You can see I've marked all the dots and I've actually drawn in pencil on the back the labels. I just find it easier. Then I can remove the labels as I'm sewing if you marked them on. So again, I've marked the C and the D points on the left body. So now I can remove the C label and match up the C on the back body with the C on the left body. Make sure those bottom, they're the bottom of the hooves, but make sure those darker sections match up. And then take the D point, fold the tail out the way, you don't want to get caught in this seam. And the same way as you did with the front body, push the pin through the mark dot from the back body into the left body. And then you know that those dots are matched up exactly. So pull that pin all the way through and then put another pin in to hold the two fabric pieces together. Now pin together between the C and the D points. You can take out that holding pin. So pin it together all the way around. Again, these are both curved edges. The curves are slightly different shapes, so you'll need to ease them into place, but they are the same length, so they will fit. There are certain sections where it's nice to match up the prints, like the lighter print at the bottom of there. So match that up with the pin first, and then you can ease between those points. 
I like to sort of place a pin about halfway between each point and then a pin in the middle of those. It helps to make sure that you get a nice even fit. Then sew together from C to D, again stopping at the point and not stitching beyond it, but reverse stitching. Now I've made little snips into that curve just because it made it easier to fit round the curve whilst I was sewing. That's up to you, but if you do find it's hard to ease one curve into the other, then just make small snips into the fabric and it will ease round better. Now press this seam open and flat. It just helps the seams to lay right on the edge and will make it neater. When you get to the really tight curves, it's quite hard to press it flat. So if you place the two pieces down flat and then fold over one side of the seam allowance and press that open, that will do the same thing. So now that the back body is attached to that side, So now take the right body and we're going to sew that to the other side of the back body. So you can see that you've got the E at the bottom and the F is the point. And this, with these two pieces, you've got that little bit sticking out that's the turning gap. But I'll show you how we're going to sew that. So match up the E points at the bottom of the legs. Again, make sure you match up the darker section that's the top of the hooves. Pin it together there. And then pin together... Where the seam allowance is extended, that's one side of the turning gap. The seam allowance is going, the turning gap is just wider because it makes it easier to slip stitch it closed when you filled your giraffe later. Matching up the prints, pin together between that one side of the turning gap and the E point at the bottom. Place plenty of pins, and when I'm doing pins, Curves like this, I like to put my pins vertically as they're more precise and they hold it. Now match up the other sides of the turning gap and pin together there. Now you can match up the F dots. So in the same way as you did before, push a pin through the dot on one side. You can remove the label and then push a pin through the dot on the other side. Pull the pin and that holds the two pieces together. And then pin the two pieces together across. Now pin them together between the dot and the left end of the turning gap. You can remove that holding dot pin now. So just ease it together. Again, if you have any problems easing it together, just snip within the seam allowance and you'll find that the fabrics go together better. Now sew from E to one side of the turning gap. Don't stitch across the turning gap, but start on the other side and stop at that point. Remember to reverse stitch either side of the seams. So you can see now I've sewn this together, left the turning gap unstitched and stopped and reverse stitched exactly on the dot. In the same way as before, press the seam open and flat where you can and then open to one side where it curves. You can leave the turning gap for a moment and then press it over to one side here because it's harder to press it flat. So you can now see that the back body is all joined into place. With the turning gap, if you press this open at this stage it makes it a bit easier so you can see that the edges of the turning gap need to meet up with the seams so the turning gap is actually a half an inch wide seam so just fold that over so that the seams meet up either end and do it on both sides sewing the body together place the front body and the left body right sides facing 
and matching up the G points at the bottom edges. So you can see I've drawn the G points on the wrong side of the fabric just because I can then remove the labels. So match up the darker section, which is the top of the hooves and pin that together. So you've got the two G points matching and you're matching up the bottom of the hoof section and pin that together. Now pin it all the way around. Again, you can match up the shaded section and then laying the, the bodies out flat. Match it at the bottom, well, underneath the chin with a pin. Now you can see that you will be stitching right across those B seam, but because you press that open, it's easy. You'll just be stitching straight across that. Then matching raw edges pinned together. Place some vertical pins just because you can get more in. Now you're going to pin the two faces together. So start by matching up the mouths, just then it because then they will match evenly across when you open it all up. So you can see that those are marked. And then pin from the bottom of the neck to the mouth. Now when you get to the darts, make sure the ears and the horns are out of the way because you don't want to sew these into the seams. So fold them downwards and make sure those darts match up. If you roll one on top of the other, you can make sure they match and then pop a pin in to just hold them in place. And then be pin between the mouth and the darts. They're all exactly the same size, these pieces, so they fit nicely. And then again, making sure the ears and the horns are folded out of the way, pin together around the back of the head. You're pinning down through the, the head neck section now. Now, when you get to the F point, this is where you need to stop stitching. So make sure that the points match up. You can see where the ends of the seams are, where you stop sewing. So make, make sure those dots match up. Again, if you push a pin horizontally through the dots, those are the very ends of the seams and the dots will, should still be in place. Place a vertical pin through and then pin the two pieces together just below it. It just holds it in place and then pin again above it because you're going to stop stitching at that dot. But if you pin below it, it just holds it in place below where you'll stop stitching. And then you can pin together along the other side of the neck. Again, it will all match up because these two pieces are the same size. Now stitch together, starting at the G all the way up, pivot when you reach the bottom of the neck. So all the way around the head, down the neck and stop stitching exactly on that dot. I'm showing you here with a pin and reverse stitch. Don't stitch beyond the dot, but actually on the dot. Now I've sewn it all together. You can see where I've sewn. I'm showing you from the other side that I sewed over the pressed open seam on the B point and then I stopped exactly on that dot. Now take the giraffe out, like I've done here, and pin the centre seam of the back body. This is the section which has the tail tacked to the bottom of it. This is the same way as you did the dart when you put the ears and the horns in. So place the raw edges of that slit together. There's the tail I'm pinning between. And then pin together from the bottom of the slit. Make sure the tail is facing nice and flat and out of the way so you don't stitch the end of it. And then pin these raw edges together all the way up to the dot where you stop stitching, so the end of the reverse stitch seam, and then sew together, and you'll have to slope off at the end of the dart. So it goes into a point gently. So here it is stitched into place, and you can see that at the bottom of the slit, I sloped it off to about half an inch. For the, at the bottom of the chin underneath the face, if you cut out a little notch below the chin, 
So I'm cutting a little bit one side and bit of the other. Don't snip into the stitches. This will just help it to turn right sides out later. Attaching the tummy. Take your assembled giraffe and on the bottom of the right body is a cut out rectangular section you can see here, which is the inner legs. Now make a little diagonal snip, just a little less than quarter of an inch long on one side and the other side. This is so that you can fit the tummy in. So you can see the little diagonal snips, no longer than quarter of an inch. Now take the tummy piece and on the one long edge, it doesn't matter which one, place this long edge right sides facing along this inner leg section, but have the inner leg section on top and the tummy underneath. So right sides facing, pin together at one side, matching up those darker top of the hoof sections, and then pin it together along the other end of the tummy section and the other side of the inner legs, just like this, and pin together. Now we're going to pin together between the two. Because you made those snips, that rectangular inner leg section, you can now open up into a straight line. So pin together between the end and one snip. Put the pin in there and then open it up and pin between the other end and the other snip. And now you can pin between the snips. So you can see because we made those little snips, that inner leg section will open out into a straight line and pin together all the way along. And then stitch this together. So you can see I've stitched it and also reverse stitch over the ends of those snips. It just makes them a little bit stronger. Then just make a little cut or a little notch into the tummy piece just where those snips are it just helps it to fold round better when you stuff the giraffe now attach the other long edge of the tummy to the other inner leg section on the other side on the left body side again make little snips diagonally just within the quarter of an inch you can measure that if you like or just make a little snip and then pin the other long edge of the body to this side. Again, remember to pin it with the inner leg section on top and the tummy underneath, just because when you sew it together, it will be easier to make sure that those little snipped edges are still lying nice and flat if you've got them on top. So pin together at one end and then pin together at the other end, matching up those darker top of the hoof sections then pin together between uh, the one snip and then pin together the other side of the snip. By doing it in little stages like this, you can make sure it's nice and even and it fits perfectly. And then pin between them. And then the same way as you did before, sew the two pieces together all the way along. And don't forget to reverse stitch as you reach the bottom of the snips just to give it a bit of extra strength because you have cut the fabric there. And then cut a little snip or notch in the tummy where those sections are just to help it to lay flat later. Personalising the soles. If you want to personalise your draft by adding either adding the name of the Georgina or writing or embroidering your own, then do this at this stage. But this is optional. So if you want to do this, I'm going to add to the Georgina. I've pressed Bondweb to the wrong side of this applique sole piece. If you've embroidered or written your own name, then press Bondweb to the wrong side of the other piece. And then you can personalise it. Once you've done that, cut around the outline, the black outline of the applique sole. Then remove the paper backing from the bonder web. If you use a pin and scratch across, that just cuts the paper. And then you can tear the paper off working from that cut section out. It's easier than trying to peel it from the edges and it stops the edges from fraying, which it can do if you peel from the edges. Then place that onto either the front sole or the back sole, it's up to you. Make sure it's central. 
You can measure that or just judge it by eye. So I'm just measuring to the left and right and the top and bottom to make sure it's in the centre. I need to move it down a little bit. Then press that into place to hold it. And then stitch it into place, either with a top stitch or by hand, or you could use a blanket stitch or a zigzag stitch. And then it will look like this. And if you per want to personalise your soles, it's ready to go. Attaching the soles. So take the front sole and fold it in half lengthways with right sides facing and matching raw edges. I've appliqued this one, but if you haven't, don't worry, yours won't have applique, just use the front sole. Plate, put a little crease to mark to the centre of the bottom of those folds and put pins in. These marks show the centre points and I use for positioning the front sole correctly in place. Repeat that to mark the centre points of the back sole. Now with your giraffe still wrong sides out, you need to find and mark the centre of the bottom raw edge of the front body. So the easiest way to do this is to fold it so that those seams match up. Make sure they match exactly. And then make a little crease where the fold is. That's the centre of the front body. Open it out and just pop a pin in there so you remember where it is. Now you need to mark the centre of the short edge of the tummy on the other side. So again, if you fold that in half so that the seams match up, then you can mark the centre of the front body and pop a pin in there. Now take the front sole that you've already marked and place that inside so it's right sides facing and matching up those pins. So the centre pins on the sole should match up to the centre pin. So place that pin with the centre pin of the front body and pin together at that point. And then working around to the other side, match the other centre pin of the front sole to that centre pin on the tummy. This just helps the, to make sure that the soles are positioned correctly and evenly. Now you can pin the sole all the way around between these two centre pins. When you get to the seams, open them out and pin them so that they're nice and open and flat. Just we'll get a neat finish this way. So I like to put a pin in there and then I know it stays open. And then I'm going round to the other side and I'm going to pin that one open. And then pin it together all the way round. Now this will fit inside, but if you have any difficulties getting it in, because obviously you're attaching a curved edge to a straight edge, make small snips in the straight edge. So that's the tummy, the right front, the left front and the body. If you make small snips within the seam allowance, then it will help to ease the straight edge of the giraffe to the curved edge of the sole. So pin it into place all the way round and then stitch it into place just like this. Make sure that you've got the giraffe uppermost and the sole underneath. You can see here I've made those little snips to help ease the straight edge around the curved edge. Once that's done, pin and sew the back sole to the other side in the same way, Don't not forgetting to mark the centre points before you do. And those are the two soles now attached to the giraffe. Finishing off. Now you finish sewing your giraffe. So I'm going to clip all the seams and curves. So where you've got all the curves, just snip through the seam allowances. Snip up to, but not actually through the stitching. By snipping these curves, it will help when you turn it right sides out to get the seams laying on the edge. If you've got any tight curves, you can cut little notches. I'm just cutting little snips, making sure they don't go into the stitches. And do this all the way round. Where you've got very straight edges, you don't need to cut into these as much, but do cut along the curves and the tighter the curve, the more little clips you need. But make sure you don't cut into the seams. Now take your time and work around the whole of the giraffe. This is what will make a difference between you having a giraffe with a really professional, neat looking finish. Is taking your time at this stage to clip all of these because then you the seams will lay right on the edge and you will get a much neater finish. So work all the way around until it's all clipped. Once that's done, turn the whole giraffe right sides out through the turning gap that you left. 
So push it all the way through. The turning gap is big enough to get it all through quite easily. Now you'll have to pull it all out. You have to pull out the feet. At this stage, if you have any labels left pinned on, you can remove them because you won't need them anymore. So push out the feet. And then if you put your hand inside, you can get hold of the giraffe's head and pull that out. Again, remove any labels that you don't need. And then just pull his head. If you reach your fingers inside, you can pull the head and the nose out. So all the ears and horns come out and you can see what he looks like right sides out. So open it all up. You can also put your fingers inside as well to push out the seams if you like. But there it is all opened out. Now this next stage where you're going to do some pressing, it takes a little bit of time to do it, but it's not difficult and really is worth it when you come to stuff your giraffe. So take every single seam and lay it so it's flat. Roll it between your fingers and press it. The seam needs to be laying right on the edge and take care that you're not creasing any other parts or sections by moving those out of the way. So working around it one part at a time, roll the seam between your fingers and press it. Now, because you did all your seam pressing as you went, and you've also clipped the seams, this will be easy to do, but you must do all of the seams. So here it is finished. You can see all of my seams are nice and flat, nice and laying on the edge. There's no creases in the giraffe because I've made sure that I've pressed out any creases that I've created when pressing seams. The edges of the turning gap are folded under, and now you will get a much neater giraffe, and he's ready to fill up. Making the weighted filling bags. These are used to give weight to the doorstop. So cut your fabric into half and then you'll have two pieces measuring 11 by 11 inches each. Fold the top edge over by half an inch and press. Now fold the whole piece in half so that those top folded edges stay folded under. So pop a pin through those. You'll have a fold on one side and the raw edges on the other side. Pin it together down the side and along the bottom. I've just used a light coloured plain cotton for this so it doesn't show through the doorstop but by you making a cotton filling bag it will hold the filling in place, stop it escaping through the seams and also won't rustle like if you have a plastic one. Now sew together across the bottom and up the side but leaving that top edge open. Once you've done that turn your filling bag right sides out, push your fingers inside to push it all out, make sure those top folded edges stay folded under and give it a press so that the seams are laying right on the edge. Once you've done that, it will look like this. There's your cotton filling bag. You now need to fill it, but only halfway. Now, I've used play sand for this. I think it's a nice way. You can use dry rice, plastic pellets, um, all sorts of things, but I like to use sand. It gives a nice fillage. So and I've used about 500 grams for each bag. But just make sure whatever filling you use that you only fill it halfway. If you put it into a jug to pour in, it's just a bit easier. Once it's all inside, then take the fold on one side and match that up to the seam on the other side and pin it together. By sewing it together across the top like this rather than straight across the top, you create almost a sack-like effect rather than a pouch. And it just sits inside the feet better. Now sew it together, once that's done, across the top, just quarter of an inch from the top, and then sew another line a quarter of an inch below that. Just those two lines just make it extra secure. So it looked like this, and now your filling is neatly inside, and you can see it's only filled halfway. Repeat that to make another filling bag in the same way. Stuffing the giraffe. Now take your giraffe and take one of your weighted filling bags. And you need to get it inside the turning gap. So obviously the filling bag is too big to get inside with all the filling. So just put the end, one end in. And then if you pour the filling through the gap and into the other end of the bag that's already inside, you will be able to get it through. So you're just making the filling narrower. But if you shake it through like this, then it will go in. Once you've got it inside the giraffe, pop it all in. It needs to sit on top of one of the soles. So if you take hold of one end of the bag, I'm going to take hold of the end that I've sewn together so the 
the folded over end. Make sure the bag is sitting on the foot. If you take hold of one, now if you shake it down like this, you can make sure that it's sitting on. And because it's got that sack shape, it will sit on quite nicely. Once it's sitting on top of the sole, push it back in. Take the other weighted filling bag and put that in the side in the same way. So put the sewn in end in first and then shake the filling through and ease it. Just do this gently because you don't want to split any of the seams on either side, but it will just shake through from one end of the bag into the other. And this is why you only half fill the bag. Otherwise you wouldn't be able to get it through because there wouldn't be the room to pour it through. So place this other weighted filling bag on top of the other sole. Again, take hold of the sewn together end Make sure the filling bag is sitting on the sole and then you can give it a nice shake downwards to make sure they're sitting right on top. Of the, I've designed them so they're just the right size so they will fill, fit nicely on top of the soles to fill it up. Now you can stuff the rest of the draft. So using your polyester fibre fill, push it through the turning gap using small bits at a time. Don't use lots, just use small pieces, particularly when you're doing the head. Push it all the way through the neck and into the end of the head. So start by stuffing the face and then the neck and then the rest of the body. And once you've done it, it will look like this. It needs to be firmly stuffed, particularly in the neck and also place filling around those weighted filling bags just so that you've got a nice smooth look. Don't overstuff it or it will split the seams, but just do it so it looks like this. So it's nice and firm, but not overstuffed. And now you're ready to sew the draft together. So take the edges of the turning gap and pin them together. You've already folded and pressed them under so they're nicely in place. So all you have to do now is matching up the folds, pin it together from the top to the bottom. Taking the time earlier to make sure that all of your seams were folded and pressed and particularly this turning gap was pressed in makes this a lot easier because you can see now how neat the giraffe is. Now to close the turning gap, you'll need to stitch this by hand using a slip stitch. So take a length of thread that matches the giraffe and push your needle about half an inch beyond the turning gap. So actually in the seam itself Now leaving a loose end, just it just helps to keep it secure. Work two or three tiny stitches on top of each other. This just secures the end of the thread. And by leaving a loose end, it means that it won't pull out and we'll snip that off in a minute. So give it a little tug and make sure that it's secure and then you can slip stitch the gaps closed. So take out the first pin and to slip stitch, you need to work stitches underneath the top of the folds. So I'm at the top fold, I've gone for a long stitch and then come out on the bottom fold, work a vertical stitch into the top fold and then underneath and into the bottom fold. So what you're aiming for is to have vertical stitches between the top folds, so that's the top turning gap and the bottom one, long stitches underneath the fold and then vertical stitches. So this means you will barely see them. So this slip stitch is also called ladder stitch because you can see that the vertical stitches are like the rungs of the ladder and then the long stitches are the long sections. Now I'm working my slip stitches here about half an inch apart because I find it easier if you work a bigger slip stitch here will space further apart then you while you're trying to deal with holding all the folds together and removing the pins you can keep it's easier if you have longer stitches but to make it really secure so that the filling doesn't come out work back along that slip stitch seam and work these stitches this time between the stitches that you worked in the first go this means that the stitches work close together, but it also means that the first time you can, you're just holding it together and the second time you're making it extra secure. So working those vertical stitches between the ones of the first row and also by having two rows of stitching going backwards and forwards, it does make it extra secure. When you get to the end, pull your thread up just in the seam and work right on top of the seam so you can't see it. A couple of small stitches actually on top of the stitch and then you won't see them and then you won't see them. Push the needle through the giraffe and out a little bit further along so that the end isn't right in the seam and then snip it off to finish and then your seam is closed. Your giraffe is now finished. He's ready to sit by your door to, or to decorate or just sit on the floor and smile at you.